welcome everybody and thank you for taking some of your Tuesday to be with us today. Um, I'm excited with what's going on in the marketplace right now. You hear all this stuff again about a slow market. And what I'm noticing is agents who are slow with action, it is a slow market. That's the reality, right? Because we're so used to having things just happen to us that the agents who are actually going out there and doing what they need to do and being aggressive and learning new things and applying new things, like those are the guys who are like, the market's never been better. Do my listings take a little bit longer to sell? Yes. But do I have a lot more business now? Yes. You know, case in point, we were just talking about Amanda Weller. Um, so I want to start this meeting off. We've had some good news about the market. Uh, MK is going to give us a market update. For, for those of you guys who don't know, MK, powerhouse top 1% lender. Uh, man, he's good. You want a lender on your side who's going to fight for your business and help you and get aggressive? That's your guy. So welcome, MK. Thanks for joining us. Yo, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I always love jumping on these calls. You get me super excited and jacked up, but uh, a couple big things we're talking about the market. Has anybody seen any shifts? Anybody's tracking the market right now? We've seen the rates have decreased slightly. Raise your hand if you've seen that or noticed that or anything like that. So two big things. So um, there's a 10-year auction that's happening today at 11, six minutes ago started. So depending on what happens, uh, and that meaning is going to dictate, hey, are these rates going to go up a little bit? Are they going to tick down a little bit? We anticipate them a half a point in fee. Now, remember, when you guys are hearing, hey, the rates are going up a half a percent, that doesn't mean a half a percent in rate. It means in fee. OK, so that means what the rate costs. OK, so there's a, uh, also the feds are meeting uh, They're in a two day meeting. So, you know, tomorrow there's be some, some more information that goes on as well. Now, at the end of the day, we can't change anything, right? So when we start saying, oh, we're going to predict the market's going to do this. If we had a crystal ball, we'd all be rich if we knew what the market was going to do because we'd hedge our money that way. The only thing that we can control is the output and the activities that we do, okay? And then the narrative. That's the only thing we can control. We cannot control yes. the market, okay? So if you think that you're going to be outsmart the market, Hey, there's a lot of people making a lot more money that can't do it either. A lot, of, <laughs> right? a lot of us who lost a lot of money trying to do that, right, MK? Absolutely. So the biggest thing that I want to reiterate with this, the market's going to start shifting, but we're already starting to see that we hit that peak. I was telling Chad and Michelle that uh, about three weeks ago, I was locking folks in at 8%, okay? 8%. And if you ask Cooley, that actually was a, a great rate. When he was in the market, they were well over that, Okay. Now, we're locking in at 8%. The reason why I'm not losing any sleep over this at all is we know we're going to refinance these rates. I want to be very clear about this. Within the next 12 months, these rates will be refinanced. Is anybody on the call? Was anybody on the call that um, we talked about the payment guarantee? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, I was here. Rebecca knows. Clue was there. Amanda, you were on there. Yes. Anybody yep. that we close right now, yep. we are going to waive the financing fees on the refinance. Okay? I'm going to reiterate that. Anybody we close, we're going to waive the financing fees on that refinance. So when you hear the objection, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to buy right now because the rates are too high. And uh, if I refinance, it's going to cost me more money. Okay. What happens with your home every single month? Anybody give me something. What happens with your home every month? The balance goes down. Yeah. Builds up. Build equity. It goes up in value. The house goes up in value every single month. Okay. So when someone tells me I can't afford $3,000 for a mortgage, but it's six months later, well, no, you're not paying for this. It's getting rolled into your loan and it's fluff money, guys. At the end of the day, it's like, yes, your value is going to be subject to changing, right? But if you have a strong real estate agent like yourself, you're going to make that back up for them when you go to sell it, right? Absolutely, right? So that's another objection you can say. I'm a very strong real estate agent. I helped you get into this property. I'm going to make sure that when we go to sell this property, that refinance money is going to come back to you. But you know what's an even bigger benefit is my preferred lender is going to pay for these uh, refinance fees. So there's no lender fees when it comes to refinancing this home. What's even better than that? We're talking about the buy down program. Okay. So I just got off with a brand new client he says, I can't buy right now because I can't afford a $3,000 payment. I said, okay, you can't afford a $3,000 payment. What if that payment was $2,500? Well, I can afford that. Well, let me show you how for the next two years, you're not going to have a $3,000 payment. Would you want to buy it now versus waiting six months when the housing prices are going to be higher because the interest rates are lower? Yes, let's keep moving. Okay. So we need to make sure on these activities, we're giving people reasons to buy, not not to buy. Okay. So we talked about that. So rates are, um, they're, they're kind of staying in this limbo. They were up at 8%. They're right around six and a quarter right now. 
There's two different things we can do. So we have the buy down program. We have a, a permanent buy down. Okay. So a permanent rate buy down. So permanent rate buy down is um, Shelly's going to go out. She's going to negotiate the seller to give me 3% in closing costs. I'm going to take all 3%. I'm going to throw that towards the interest rate. So instead of a six and a quarter, I'm going to have a 5.125. Okay. Great rate, right? That's a rate that you could probably stick with and just ride that out. Now, what are the bad things about doing that? What's a con? Anybody out there? Yes, their closing costs aren't covered. Closing costs aren't covered. That's good. Yep. That I can think of. What's another one? Jason's on there. Jason's going to say something. If if the rates go down, you you can't you won't be able to take advantage of it. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. So so great thing. So one thing Jason's hitting on right now. So if I take all three percent instead of paying for my closing costs, I put that towards the rate. When I go to refinance that home. I lose that 3% that I bought that rate down, okay? So you're hedging on that rate staying at 5.125. That's what you're hedging, right? Versus if you did the buy down, right? You have the higher rate, you have that money in there and you're just hedging that those rates will go down lower, right? And then as soon as you refinance the loan, anything that's left in that buy down account goes towards your uh, balance on paying that down. So you don't lose that money. So that might be a good benefit for you. But some people might say, listen, I, I want the comfortability of knowing this rate's gonna stay the same forever. Some people are like that, you're not gonna fight that, right? So let's not push a wet rope on that. Let's just you know, encourage them to move, move forward if they're comfortable with the payment. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So those are the two big things I wanted to talk to you about on the strategy of using the buy-down program versus a permanent buy-down. The permanent buy-down is not a bad option, but we know the rates will come down. They have to, they will come down but it's really the comfortability of your borrower, okay? Last thing on that, FHA, uh, FHA and conventional. So you have a conventional loan, putting minimum down, you can only get how much? 3% in closing costs, right? FHA, you can get 6% in closing costs. So now when we're talking about a borrower putting minimum down and they wanna do a buy down and they wanna pay for closing costs, that's how we do it. We use the FHA program for that, okay? That's how we do that. So what I did was last week, I think on the, uh, on the co-founders page, on the Facebook page, I asked if anybody wanted marketing, a bunch of you guys took advantage of that. And I sent that over to you. So any kind of marketing you want on, um, it'll have a side-by-side -side graph of all the loan programs on how much credit you can get. We can put your information on there, my information on there. You can send it to your client. Um, if you want any information about the buy down, just shoot me a message on my marketing team, create that for you. Okay. We'll send that over. I love it. I love MK, it. Anybody got any questions quick, for MK? Yes. Yeah, I, have go a quick, ahead. I have a question about that 3%. Is, is, is the buy down portion considered a closing cost or can you ask for more than 3% and use it toward the buy down? It's considered, it's a part of the concession because it's, it's okay. coming from the seller. Yep. Great question. Okay. Okay. Great question. Now, anybody else? Now, oh, great. Go so, ahead. one other thing too is we do have. If you have a, a competitive offer, there's a, there's there's multiple offers. You want to buy this specific, specific property. Your buyer's having issues with. Hey, I don't know about this payment. Guild does offer a one year buy down for free. Okay, we just came out just to make sure that we're pushing buyers more towards uh, purchasing versus sitting on the sideline. We'll do a one year for free. Okay? That's awesome. That's another thing you can you can look at. All right. Anybody else? Well, I just want to comment that I think, you know, I talk to a lot of lenders, like I'm sure other agents do, and Guild seems to be the most progressive one right now with what you're offering buyers in, um, you know, just your free refi. Nobody else is doing that right now. And that's just so valuable to offer your buyers and your sellers. Yeah. Yeah. The car is great. The driver is awesome. You know, with Guild. <laughs> that's the good thing. So um, anyway, sorry, um, I'm excited to get into what I wanted to get into today. I'm sitting here, MK's talking and I'm all juiced up. My <laughs> legs are moving. How many of you guys love technology? Great. What's the problem with technology right now, guys, in the real estate industry, if you had to guess? Using it. Too much of it. Too much. Yeah. It, makes you, it makes you lazy, doesn't it? it make, so technology to me is something that should always be leveraged, but it's not something that you should just rely on. Right, because even if you have great technology, you still have to kick up dust. You still got to push that business forward using good old-fashioned muscle. Would you guys agree with me on that? 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And so I, I, wa I wanted to ask you guys, like, when it comes to the hustle and muscle part, which is what we're going to talk about today, what is your aim right now in your business? Honestly, what is the aim? Like, just broadly. I don't want anything specific, but just broadly, what is the aim right now for you guys? Can I get some just examples of what your aim is? I just want to make sure that we've got a clear direction of where we're going, where we're putting our Close mind and deals. energy to. Close more deals. Close I love deals. it. Anybody and else? Two crises in a month. In my sphere, getting a bigger sphere, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Crossroads. Confidently communicate urgency. To do all of that stuff, and that's a means to something, right? Um, uh, why did I forget your name for a second, Amanda? Oh, shit, uh, Amanda. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, in order to do all this stuff, in order to close deals, in order to, to do all these things that we want to do, we've got to get in front of people, right? We've got to get in front of people. That's it. That's the main aim for everybody right now is to get in front of people, right? And to get in front of people, we got to do things a little bit different. Mainly, what's the problem with getting in front of people right now, especially all those leads that you've got in your pipeline, all of the people that you've been talking to? What's the major problem that you guys are having right now? I think I have an idea, but I want to hear from, you, from your guys' mouths. What's the problem that you're having right now with those people? It's easy for them to go. Conversion. Yep. Conversion. Conversion. Why do you think you're having a hard time converting, guys? I think they don't see a value. People stop talking to you because they get scared. People stop talking yeah. to you. Yes, people ghost you, right? And it's not that they, they don't see the value. It's just sometimes, guys, we can get so caught up in what we're doing that our messaging just gets stale, right? The way that we go about doing things, just doing the check-in calls, all of that shit gets stale. It doesn't excite people. It doesn't motivate people. Why? Because we're doing the same things the same way, and our marketing hasn't changed. The way that we're approaching them, the way that we're speaking to them hasn't changed. We're not doing a great job motivating people to, to be receptive to our message, right? So what do we do when our message gets stale? We've got to freshen things up a little bit, right? We've got to do things a little bit different. We've got to add some things to our repertoire french word yep absolutely speak french um and that's what i want to talk to you guys about today so we're going to be going over some scripts michelle can you pull some of those up i gotta turn my camera off real quick so i can read this stuff otherwise you guys are gonna be looking at my nose hair that's never attractive trust me glad i'm buried already but i want to talk to you uh, but first before we do that actually i want to ask you guys a question because i'm going to i'm going to use this later how many of you guys have gotten a great deal on behalf of your buyers in this market how many of you guys have taken advantage of the market for your buyers and got them a great deal who's done that i have definitely yeah. i'm going to hear some of that yeah. right now amanda give me give me an example of your deal and if you guys are on this meeting with your cameras on, I want you to write some of these down, okay? Because you're gonna leverage this. And if sometimes you can't leverage yourself, say that you weren't the type of person who got somebody a great deal, right? The best thing that you could do is leverage somebody else's success. We're in your group, we're on your team, right? Still in your sales repertoire. French word twice on the same phone call. Amanda, <laughs> give me that deal. All right, so my buyers uh, found a property that they loved that was on the market for 100 10 days. So we offered under list and we got the seller to pay for um, their interest rate buy down. We, uh, so we saved them. How much under market? Uh, we were 15,000 under market. And then also at the inspection, the, um, the seller paid for $10,000 towards the repairs and like a escrow holdback. So total in totality, what was that? $25,000. $25,000 $25, off of their $350,000 home. Perfect. Anybody else? I got one. Go ahead, AJ. So I had a buyer. We came in about 15 as well under, and then they covered 12000 in closing. Okay. $30,000 swing there just about, right? Yeah. And Anybody then it over appraised. So we ended up having 30000 in equity. Walked in with a thirty thousand dollar equity position, right? That's a brand new car, as Bob Barker would say, right? And the extra money um, they gave back in cash, so he actually ended up walking away with two thousand dollars cash and equity. That's amazing. That's amazing. Anybody else? Anybody else get their clients a monster deal? Got Come my, on, don't be shy. I got my fifty thousand k below. Fifty thousand k below. Who said that? MD. MD. How much was the house worth? Uh, Five ninety nine, five ninety nine, and you got him fifty grand less. You got him in fifty grand less, right? Five fifty. 
Awesome. That that's amazing, guys. And so when we talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that, right? So write those messages down. And even if you observe something in the marketplace, right, where you saw a house listed for 600 and it sold for five, right? Pay attention to that stuff and write that down. Anybody, any one of you guys know about a deal that was done that was amazing, right? Something that went way below asking price. Do do any of you guys, maybe it's not you, but have you observed anything like that going on in the marketplace? Actually, I Please. had one that um we got it was you know it's a low end house it was 325 and we got it for 300,000 there you go right but yep. there are even more extreme examples out there right that you can observe you know houses going for $100,000 less have any of you guys seen any of that happening in your marketplace right now mm -hmm. yes yes you have okay so number one pay attention to those and if you could think of an example of you saw that you saw recently write it down now we're going to use it later okay so how do we how do we talk to people different, right? How do we come with different messaging than we've been coming out already? Number one, check yourself and make sure that you're passionate with everything that you're doing before you decide to pick up any phone call. Make sure that you believe in what you're saying and make sure that you come at it with the mindset that you're actually providing value to the person that you're talking to. If you're not willing to do that, don't make the phone call because you're not going to get through right? That's first and foremost, okay? Now, I, I've got some scripts for different buyers in different situations that I want to go through with you right now. And I think last week, we dove into this a little bit. Um, we talked about some strategies on how to get stale buyers going, right? Which is, you know, you know somebody who's looking for a, an $800,000 house, right? You start calling $800,000 houses and you ask them if they'd be willing to take a look at a $700,000 offer. You might get one yes out of the 15 people that you call, right? But that's a great way to get your buyers re-energized, isn't it, right? Hey, I know that you were looking at an $800,000 house. You can no longer afford it. You thought your payment was going to be too high. I know of a property that fits exactly what you're looking for that will look at an offer of $700,000. let us go look at it, right? But but remember when we go through these scripts, guys, that the aim is to do what? Meet with them, get in front Engage of them, them. Yes. inspire them. Please understand that the, the days of the check-in call are done, right? Because it's your job to get people going, right? So that, hey, just checking in on you. How's the weather? How's, how's your search going? No, 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 no. We've got to be the professionals and start getting people on this conveyor belt that we're going to talk about later, okay? So, Michelle, can you pull up our first script, please? I don't have scripts I'm pulling up. I'll copy and paste them into the chat. Okay, so you don't. Okay, so first time, uh, let's let's go. We, we left off with uh, the scripts for renters last time. I want to streamline this into the low motivation script, which we touched on, but we didn't get to it in full. So low motivation script, Michelle, if you could pull that up or copy and paste that, that would be great. All right, so who wants to, Michelle, can you put this in the chat group? Because I want to yeah. invite you guys to participate here. You let me know when you post it, please. Maybe. Poss possibly. I see it. All right. Awesome. All right. So, you know, you, you have all those people who are stale because they think the market's going to crash. This is actually one that I believe we talked about last week that I just want to rehash, right? Yeah. Low motivation, right? I think the market's going to crash. I'm scared. I don't want to make a move right now. We actually did this on the Breakfast Club, too, a couple of days ago. Weller, I'm going to have you read this for me really quick, that low motivation script. Okay. Um, we think the market is going to crash. Do you want me to read the whole thing out loud? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, how much? Okay, how much do you think the market is going to crash by? If they're realistic. Important. Real quickly, oh, yeah. real quickly, why is that important question? How much do you think the market is going to crash by? Makes them it be makes, specific. It yeah, makes them be specific. specific, right? And it gives you something to build off of, right? Because if it's just hypothetically the market is going to crash, you have nothing to work off. You have no solution to give them because you don't know how far they're waiting for it to crash. They don't even know, right? So it's important to cement some things in the conversation so that you can make progress. Okay, well, how much do you think that's going to crash by? And some people might say a lot. Some people might say... You know, I, I'm not sure. I just think it's going to get real bad, right? Now, if you take a look at the history, guys, when is the market, when, when have house, home prices gone down 20% ever? 
I mean, maybe there was some point in history that I'm not aware of when something happened, but typically like the worst that's ever gone down is not very much. In fact, it's always gone up, but you want to get them to communicate what their standard is. So Amanda, I just think the market is going to crash. So I don't want to do anything until the market crashes. Okay. So by how much do you think the market's going to crash? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Probably going to, it's probably going to go down a lot. Okay. So um, maybe 10%, 15%? Yeah, I mean, 10%. Okay, so if I could find you a property today that's 10% under market value and you didn't have to necessarily wait to see if it's going to happen, would you be interested in that? Okay, now how do we change that, that last part that I don't like? Would you be interested in that, right? How do we change that up a little bit, guys? Oh, yeah, then obviously uh -huh. that would make sense for you, right? Yeah, that obviously that would make sense for you and put you in a great equity position, regardless of how the market shifted, right? Yep. So, Amanda, tell me you're concerned about the market crashing. Uh, Cooley, I'm just really concerned that the market's going to crash. Yeah, Amanda, a lot of people are thinking the exact same thing, and it's causing a lot of people to hesitate. So I understand that. Now, when you say that you're concerned about the market crashing, what specifically do you mean by that? Well, I mean, values are going down, so I, I could potentially buy a house and then it would be worth way less by the time, you know, I'm actually in it and responsible for the mortgage. Yeah, the last thing that you want to do is buy a house, Amanda, and find yourself underwater in it. Now, when you're worried about the market crashing, how bad do you think the market was going to crash? And just like worst case scenario. Well, I guess the last time the housing market crashed, it was somewhere between like 8 and 15, right? Yeah, it's it's never really, it's always rebounded, first and foremost, that's the great thing. But let's say worst case scenario, the market crashes by 10%. Amanda, if I can find you a property right now, take advantage of the market and find you a property that's 10%, 15% below market value, so that way you walk in with a great equity position and you're protected, then it sounds to me like that would still make sense for you, right? Yeah, it definitely sounds like that would make and sense. The, and the great news is, Amanda, if the market doesn't crash, which I don't think it won't, man, you've walked into a great equity position that's going to continue to grow. So, Amanda, I've got time on my schedule tomorrow at six or would seven be better for you? Hard to say no to that. Let's do six. So, so right, you see how you cement the fact, like, let's talk about your worst case scenario, what you're worried about, right? Then let me offer a solution for your worst case scenario that probably won't happen anyway, right? And now mm -hmm. you've got a solution. Now you can move forward without worrying about your worst case scenario. Solutions, right? Are you guys feeling me on that? Who feels like that's a valuable yes, conversation uh, to have? Definitely. Yeah, valuable. definitely. Good stuff. Okay. Now, for all of you guys who have people in your pipeline right now who have that concern, I want you to earmark this. I want you to star this. And I want you to have that conversation with your buyers today. Okay? But be strong. Okay? Be the expert in the room. Be, be mommy or daddy. You have to be because they're relying on you. And anytime that people are uncertain, what are they, what are they, what are they just searching for? What do they want? Confidence. They want a little bit of Direction. certainty. Direction. Right? Direction. Right? I'm going to my doctor to get heart surgery. I don't want him going, hmm, well, I don't know. You know, you could make it or no, I want him to say, yeah, all, it's a routine procedure. Here's what we got to do. And I'm going to give you direction, right? That's what we want. That's what your buyers want. They want some direction from an expert. Fair enough? Absolutely. Yep. But just remember, when you do these kind of things, guys, when you say this kind of stuff, and this is where, why sales gets a bad rep, right? Sales gets a bad rep because it's like, I'm just going to say shit to people and I'm going to do things the normal way, right? That's why that's called selling somebody a lemon, which is what we don't do. We're strong at what we do, guys, because we back up everything that we say. Everything that we sell, we, we do, if that makes sense. So if you are going to sell your client this, make sure that you allocate some time to go out there and take that action, to start calling these listings and asking them, hey, would you be willing to take this offer? Do them a service, right? Because that's what it's going to take. It's the hustle and the muscle of putting deals together. Make sense, guys? Yep. All right. Yep. Fair enough. Like it. All right. So really quickly, Michelle, let's move on. All of you guys have somebody that you haven't been in the car with for a while. You haven't taken around in a while, right? How many of you guys have those people? They were active buyers and they just somehow kind of fell off, right? Yep. Okay, awesome. Yep. Michelle, can you pop that in the chat group, please? Can you just let me know when you pop that in there? I can't see, Michelle. 
Michelle, are you not talking to me? I'm not talking to you. There we go. My goodness. Yes, All right. So someone you haven't been in the car with for a while, Donna Huber, give this to me. She's like, cool, you just ran me through the ringer with the breakfast club this morning. <laughs> now on the meeting, yes, Donna, this is how we grow. Give it to me. Okay. A lot of things have changed in the market. Do you want me to read the whole thing? Uh, yeah, without that. Works. <laughs> yes, come on. God. This is why our messaging Stop. has to be exciting and fresh, right? Okay. That's what it's gotta hey, be though. A lot of things have changed in the market. There is so much more inventory right now. Let's just go look at some properties. I have a few in mind. We've only been looking for ones for seven uh, ones for seven hundred. Let's go look at some for eight hundred and get your feedback. You'll be surprised. You're re-energizing the buyer. You see that at the bottom, right? It's re-energizing. It's it's giving them something better to look forward to, right? And talk to them about that. Hey, Donna. Donna? Yeah. Hey, a lot of things have changed in the market. There is so much more inventory right now. And guess what? Because there's more inventory, people are willing to go get, people are actually willing to make concessions and you can get a great deal right now. Now, I know that we've been looking at properties that are about 800,000. Donna, that's what your, that's your target price, right? Yeah, that's right. hundred percent. And right now, Donna, there are actually people who are willing to come down to seven. So wouldn't it be great if we could get an $800,000 house at 700K and walk into a $100,000 equity position? That'd be fantastic. Okay, perfect. And what I'm going to do, Donna, is I'm going to get to work. I'm going to make a, I'm going to reach out to a lot of these properties that I know are just stale and on the market and just looking for a buyer. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and schedule some appointments with us. And I'm going to make our first appointment for 11 o'clock on Wednesday. Does that work for you or would Thursday work better? No, that works perfect. Right. You're letting them know that you're working, you're energized, you're excited about what's going on because it's an opportunity for them, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Guys, is is now a great opportunity for your buyers? Yes. I think Absolutely. so. Yes. Yep. Definitely. Yep. yes, it is. Cody, yes, you're Chad. breaking my heart because you're on my breakfast club, but you didn't even unmute your microphone and say yes. <laughs> yes. Cody, Absolutely. is it a great time for your buyers? <laughs> Absolutely. A hundred percent it is. Absolutely. Okay. So re-energize it. Guys, this will be I know I'm deviating from what I've got printed here in this script. Okay. But it's important that you make it your own. And that's what I do with every single script, okay? So go back and listen to this recording, write this down and say this in your words where you can be excited about it. Um, all right, so how do we keep our active buyers in the game, right? That's a great question, okay? Now, guys, anybody have any ideas about how they keep their buyers in the game right now? Anybody have any secrets that they want to divulge for our group today? The biggest thing is sense of urgency, Chad. I'm telling you right now, so we're talking to them they have to be inundated with a sense of urgency on why they need to buy right now and taking advantage of the market. So we were talking about, you were just literally explaining this, all the success stories. You should have three success stories already like ready to just bang, bang and come out with it, right? So we're always going to get somebody that's talking about, well, I don't have enough money, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I just want to let you know. So someone on our team just got somebody under contract. They had $0 in the bank account. Right. They had their closing costs paid for. They had a two one buy down that the seller paid for and they got a discount on the house. They're going to move in and they don't even need to pay their first mortgage because they actually skip a month when they move in. This is literally the time to buy when the last three years, five years, you couldn't do this at all. So if you really want to be a homeowner, if you want to be a homeowner right now, this is the time to do it and take advantage of it. A hundred percent. And that message is great over the phone. You all have those guys who are not picking up the phone, right? They're scared to talk to you now, right? Because they know, they know what you want, right? But it's about giving your clients what they want. And so those testimonials that we were talking about, that we were writing down, right? That we, we thought about what's going on in the marketplace. Don't be afraid to record a video with that testimonial. Okay. Record a video and send them that video. Okay. Text it to them. Not groundbreaking, but this is how we leverage technology and muscle, okay? Record that video with some excitement, okay? Not, not uh, you know, Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, but just personalized message. Shelly, I've got some great news, right? I just, my team member just sold a product or just got a great deal for his client. We got it $100,000 below asking price. Now, I know that you are really concerned about the payment. The interest rates have actually dropped a, a full percentage point. So if we can get you $100,000 below and get your interest rate down 1%, then this solves a big part of your problem when it comes to payment, 
right? And, and so have those messages ready to go. It takes you two minutes, you know? And if you guys are worried about what you look like on camera, get over that. I've got one eyebrow that's somehow higher than the other, right? So just Dad, get you over look it. great. Thank you, Shova. I appreciate that. This made yep. me blush. Um, all right. So Chad, don't weekly be for compliments now. I do that all the time. It's a bad characteristic of mine. Um, I fly fish for compliments. Um, weekly inventory checklist, guys. What do I mean by that? What's a weekly inventory checklist? Like no homes that are sold and how many there are active? Let's keep them in the market know, in the last seven days. Yeah. Do you guys know yeah. what's new on the market, right? Do you guys do you guys know what inventory is available for your clients? And are you sending it to them? Or are you actually selling it to them? Okay. What is the difference between sending and selling? You know, professional having all yeah, the you actually have to value. know about the property. Yeah, the engagement. Are you taking them to showings and stuff? It's, it's automated versus, versus coming from you. Right. The difference of just letting them receive them via email and call me when you see something you like. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Or saying, I mean, you know exactly what they're looking for. You know your clients, right? It's like, how do I sell this property as an opportunity for them? You know what I mean? Not only does this fit your criteria, but it's got X, Y, and Z. I'm really excited about it. It's been sitting on the market for X amount of days, which means they're more likely to take a, a low offer. I already talked to the agent. They're willing to negotiate. What's a good time for us to go take a look at this home? right? It's knowing your inventory, knowing what your buyers want, and reaching out to your buyers with that muscle to actually get things moving, if that makes yeah. sense. And Michelle? On of that, it's, I look at it as, you know, again, you're preempting versus just, okay, we saw this, you weren't interested, right? It's every week we are sitting down, whether it's over Zoom or phone, whatever we're doing, but we're sitting down and we're going over the new inventory, right? We have a scheduled plan to keep moving them forward, not just, well, when you see something you like. Chad, can I say yeah. one thing on that? I sure. think the biggest game changer I've seen on getting clients under contract and under contract uh, quickly is agents that are reaching out and picking up the phone and actually calling the listing agents. So instead of being an order taker, being a professional. So all the all the uh, yeah. agents that I've been working with, I think Dan did a great job too. Is Dan knew everything about the house. He knew uh, before his client even called, he knew everything about the house, reached out to the listing agent, made sure he knew all the stats on it, what kind of offer they're looking for, what kind of structure they're looking for before they even went to the property. We got a client under contract like quick. Brittany did the same yeah. thing. It was just like, boom, we're under contract. Pre-approved and that under contract within 24 hours. And that's really a difference maker too, isn't it, MK? And that's kind of what I was talking about in terms of like leveraging technology versus relying on technology. You could, you could rely on technology all day long when the market was moving on its own. You know what I mean? The market's not moving on its own anymore, right? The market moves when you move. The market moves when you use your muscle to push it forward. So that's exactly what I was talking about. Now, there's got to be an emphasis, guys, when you're working with these buyers in order to get them, prevent them from going stale, is that conveyor belt that I was talking about. Now, what do I mean by conveyor belt? Can anybody kind of dress me down with that? Amanda, you and I talked about conveyor belts with your AAs, right? Uh, yeah, there's a process to follow where there's like the the continuous touches, the follow up process. The uh, it does what? So if if you've got a, a factory, right, and you are making you're building, you're making soap or whatever it is, right? What happens when that when something falls off the conveyor belt? Oh, it right? stops going working. from this gets stamped here, yeah. right? It stops working. It stops making progress. Whatever that thing is that you're building is not going to be made, right? Exactly. And so the same thing is true with your buyers, right? Are you showing them properties and then just stopping there and saying, hey, we'll be in touch, right? Or is there always a next destination? Is there always something next for them to look at, to be excited about? Have you prepared that? Okay. Yeah. How many of you guys use the conveyor belt system right now? And how many of you guys just kind of leave it up to, hey, call me when you find something you like. Hey, call me when this happens. Hey, I'll be in touch. How many of you guys have caught yourself saying things like that or just looking back, you go, oh, I do that all the time. It's my kryptonite. Yeah, I want to say yeah. at least half my clients are yeah. in that state right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they go stale and cold, don't they? Yep. Yeah, they don't call. <laughs> 100%. So while you're actually going out there showing properties, you should be taking notes, right? It's, it's important. 
because if you know exactly what they're complaining about, yada, 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 then you know exactly what to sell them as far as the hope for the future, the next destination, right? What are we going to do next? So script, Michelle, this is a script for a buyer that you're taking out, how to keep them on the conveyor belt. And this, this, this mindset that everyone has, that you have to adopt, right? Is that you're never leaving an appointment without another appointment. The scripts in there clearly, but that's the mindset you have to adopt to going from being the professional to being an order taker. Exactly, exactly. So here's the script, and let's go with uh, who wants to read this script with me? Uh, I'll read it, Cody. Chad. Who, who said I'll read it, Chad? Dom. Dom, dude, this guy writes bulls, by the way. Dominic, <laughs> he's an actual bull writer. Uh, all right, so Dom, we just we just looked at four houses. I'm not happy with any of them. Okay. How are you going to talk to me? Okay, great. This was awesome. I'm glad we saw these houses today. And now that I've learned what is most important or that you have to have the fourth bedroom, I have some other properties in mind that might be a great fit. How does Tuesday at five work for you? Now, maybe you don't have any properties yet. Okay. And this is what we talk about. Maybe you don't have any properties for them to look at yet, but can you get off your butt and find some in between now and Next Tuesday, in between now and the next two days, can you do that? Absolutely. You know you have the capability to do that, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we say, right? Notice how he added in there. Um, you know, I know that fourth bedroom is really important to you, right? That's from taking notes while you're while you're walking your people around or just keeping those mental notes either or. Listen, I know that you wanted to find a property with um, with a little bit more yard. I know how important that is for you. I've got some great properties in mind that I think will be a great fit. How does Tuesday at five work for you? Well, what are those properties? That's a great question. I'm going to do my homework on those properties just to make sure that they're the perfect fit. I'll schedule those meetings and I'll give you a preview of them before we actually meet, okay? But Sounds what have I done? What have I walked away with here? Another appointment. Another or appointment. Yeah. The next step. The next step, right? And the cool thing is, is I've also given myself something to do so that my buyers aren't just going stale, right? Again, okay. All of you guys, I'm willing to bet dollars to donuts have a problem relying on technology rather than leveraging it, right? So you put them up on your drip campaigns and you've like fix it in, like dentures, fix it in and forget. You know what I mean? It's not that kind of market, right? Are we fix it in agents or no? No, no. Like, really? What? <laughs> fix it in, really? Uh, all right, perfect. So that's, that's the script, guys. Um, now, check-in calls, should we be doing them? No. No. Okay. Just flat emails. Should we be emailing them? Hey guys, how's it going? Yes or no? No. Yeah, it depends on if you want to close them tonight, right? We're not going to be an <laughs> order taker. We're we're professionals, and that's what we do. Okay. Uh, we're not going to do that any longer. So I hope you guys honestly take that seriously. Okay, because it will it will change your business. Whether it's on the listing side right? Whether it's on the buyer's side, whether that's with your agent attraction. This is something that for Amanda, I've been working on as of late with her agent attraction. And how does that work, Amanda? Like you've got somebody who is disinterested to like, oh my God, now I'm interested, right? Oh yeah. It he's, works. He's ready. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. So Michelle, we're going to go with um, really quickly. What, what do we got for time? Michelle, how much time do we have left? We got to stay under 15. So I got to cut off. Okay, we have to cut off now? No, 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 I just can't go past 15. You probably okay. got 10. Now guys, off-market properties. That's something that we sell a lot, right? And we talk about that on The Breakfast Club, right? We talk about off-market properties. When we're talking about like um, a, a seller who, you know, doesn't know if he could find a house, right? Or wants to find a good deal on a new house, right? We automatically default to off-market properties, right? The, the, it's, it's important for us to leverage our resources now more than ever. And your off-market properties are located where? Where do you guys have off-market properties? Buyers cancels. Spires Should cancels? Your database. Should be your database. Your, your database? database? Yeah, circle prospecting. You can circle prospecting. Mm -hmm. Bizbos. Bizbos, expired, canceled, circle prospecting. Yeah, it's, it's, and if you guys think about how many people over the course of the past 12 months have said, bring me a buyer, 
bring me a buyer. And then if you look at, at your CRM system and you see that they have yet to list, what are they? Off-market property. Off yeah. Off-market property. Buyers. And how... How awesome would it be, guys? I mean, this is kind of like the dream, right? How awesome would it be if you called somebody and they're just like, what, Amanda, do you have a buyer? And you're going to be like, yeah, as a matter yes. of fact, I've got a qualified <laughs> buyer right now who wants to look at your home, right? Mm -hmm. How great would that be? It's, it's like the <laughs> ultimate F you to that objection, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, I finally do, okay? And we can leverage that, guys. Uh, but we've got to know our inventory. We've got to know where those off-market properties are. And we got to be willing to actually go out there and uh, and, and resuscitate those off-market properties. Leverage them to find a deal on behalf of your buyers. Leverage them to also get more listings. Okay? Fair enough? Perfect. Okay. What are some other ways, guys? Go ahead, Michelle. You were going to say something? I was going to say another one that for me is very obvious. I think there's only a handful of people within our this large network of agents we have that actually leverages that. Do you guys ever see um, some of your peers, your colleagues posting into the chats or the Facebook group saying, hey, does anyone have this? I have a buyer mm -hmm. looking for this. Yes. Like, yeah. 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 Only a few people I see actually leveraging that because guess who has buyers, right? Guess who has listings? Uh, there's hundreds of agents within this basically peer group network um, that are bringing properties that are going on appointments that are meeting with sellers. That to me is probably one of your biggest sources. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, man. I've got so many things that I want to get into today, guys. So far, let's go midpoint here. Let me just turn on my camera so that you know I'm still here. Um, so, so far guys, midway, like, are you seeing value in this? Is this stuff that you feel like you can go out there and execute like today? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And and for yes. a lot of you guys, do you feel like some of this is like new messaging as well? Different than maybe the conversations that you have been having or or an excuse to go out there and kind of kick up some dust and start some fires? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I love it. I love it. Um, Michelle. I can get into two different things here. And maybe maybe I'll just take a poll with you guys because we only have 10 minutes, 10 minutes left. I can get go deeper into how we're finding off-market properties, or I can get into some marketing strategies and some other ways that we can kick up some dust right now. Marketing. Marketing strategies, yeah. Please marketing. Marketing. I personally think the marketing strategy though, Cooley, is gonna be like an hour. That's just oh, my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Not a fun That's true. Fun. I can stay. It's such good stuff, though. Uh, I know. I know. All right. Well, it's, so, it's why everyone needs to make sure they're here next week. That's a whole session. Yeah. And we're going to get deeper into this. And guys, I want to let you know that come January 1st, I'm going to have a buyer's role play that we're going to be doing where we can practice this every single day. And I know that would be helpful to a lot of you guys. Um, but maybe we can wrap this up by getting you guys, some of you guys, a little bit uncomfortable and role playing some of this stuff out. OK, because I want you guys to hear it. I want you to feel it. And I want you to be excited about it. If you're representing a buyer right now, there 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 are a million and one reasons why you should be reaching out to them, why you should be leading them. You've got to be comfortable and confident to be able to do that. So who wants to jump in here and just make a quick buyer's phone call with me where you're actually resuscitating a buyer? I do. Gagan, Anybody please. besides Gagan? Jeez. Wow. <laughs> oh, my dad. Chief, I do. I want, I'm going to go with Jason Schaefer. Jason I'm Schaefer, I'm are you in. ready to go? Yeah. I, I want you to call me up and I want to create a scenario here where I'm a buyer, okay? And I've just ghosted you. I was looking for a three bedroom, four bath house and you pick the village, okay? And I've just kind of ghosted you. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Chad, it's Jason with EXP. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine, uh, Jason. What What can I do for you? Hey, we haven't talked in a in, in a while. Um, I know you were looking for that three bed uh, or what three bed four bath over there in in Auburn. Yeah. Um, you still in the market for that, or what? What's happening right now? No, I mean things have changed. We decided that we're just going to hang tight. I talked to my wife about it, and I just don't think the timing's right. Right. Yeah. No, a lot of people are feeling that way. What What specifically has you holding off? Is there a specific concern that you have? Well, I mean, just the market, it's not, it's, it's not great right now. You know, the market's terrible. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. And, uh, you know, the last thing that we want to do is buy a house. So we're just going to wait and see what the market does, see how that plays out and then figure out what to do from there. 
Yeah, no, there's people thinking that. Chad, if, if you had to guess what the market's going to do here in the in the near to distant future, you know, some sort of downturn or crash, what do you what do you think? I mean, what what percentage do you think it's going to go down? Can you get yeah, a number? Well, I'm, re- I, I'm really into fear porn. I've been watching a lot of CNN lately and, you know, they're talking about a crash. You know what I mean? They're talking about the housing market going down dramatically. So we don't want to do anything right now. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, we're talking, you're, you're like, if it went down 10%, that sounds bad, right? Yeah, I mean, is that bad? Maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's all in perspective, right? You know, Chad, if if I could find you that house that you were looking for, that three bed, four bath, no, four bed, three bath, whatever house that you were looking for there in Auburn, and we could find it 10% lower than market value right now, wouldn't, wouldn't that make sense to you? So I want you to, Jason, I want you to cap it right? We got to do a good job of capping it and, and making sure that there's no wiggle room to say, well, it could go down more. You know what I mean? That's why you're getting me to agree to that 10%. And guys, that's why you want to solidify that right there. So Jason, you know, historically home prices have never gone down more than X percent, right? We, I, Jason, I think we could both agree that 10, a 10% uh, reduction in the market would be unheard of, right? I mean, that's a market crash. That's worst case scenario, right? Yeah, no, it would. You see how you're, you're getting me to agree to worst case scenario, so there's no yeah. wiggle room, right? Yeah. Because if it's like, I want to wait till the market get be- gets better, well, we've already talked worst case scenario. You know what I mean? So yeah. you eliminate that objection, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, it so does. Jason, I, and I like how you got made me get specific, right? I tried to be vague with you twice on purpose, and you kind of nailed me down, right? What specifically is your concern? When you say that you're worried about the market, what do you mean by that? It's that specificity, that, that's going to allow you to get to the bottom of an issue and create a solution. So Jason, yeah, 10%, that would be terrible. Yeah, no, 10, 10% would, would be a rough number. But Chad, if I could show you a way to get that four bed, three three bath that you were looking at over there in Auburn. It's, not, it's not, but I mean, you're giving me an opportunity here, right? It's a great news. Yeah, I think we can both agree, Jason, that 10% would be kind of worst case scenario, right? Yeah. Yes, it would. Yeah. And the awesome thing, Jason, about the market right now is sellers are willing to make a lot of concessions. So Jason, if I can show you a way to get you exactly what you're looking for, a three bedroom, four bath house in Tukwila and get that 10% below market value so that you still walk into a great equity position, regardless of what happens in the market, then it sounds to me like that would make sense for you, right? Isn't that what I said? (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's well, uh, yes. You you it's 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 leaving room for wiggles. You know what I mean? No, I and that's know. why I, I wish I could do it like that. Because you you can you can keep saying but and then it's and then it's an argument, right? And you're like backtracking on what you're saying rather than, yeah, okay, that's our meeting point, right? That's our common goal point. It's not but, it's yeah, okay. So here's all the only thing we have to do, you know? It's the way that you look at your calls or, or the, the way you look at what people are saying. So, Jason, one more time. Jason, market's going to crash by 10%. Yeah, Chad, 10, 10% would, would be a, a major number down. Chad, you know what? There's some magic going on in the market right now. There, there are sellers that are giving up concessions. They're paying closing costs. They're paying buy-down numbers right now in the marketplace. Chad, if we could get you in that four-bed, three, three-bath three house over there in Auburn that you were looking at a month ago and do it 10% less than what it was a month ago, that would make sense to you, right? Uh, Yeah, but do you think that's possible, Jason? Chad, I see it going on right now. My, my team, I, I'm on a team of about 400 agents and my team, we talk about this on the daily and it's happening right now. Um, um, closing costs are being paid by the sellers as we speak. And I'd like you to be one of them that's taking advantage of that. I've got like three houses over there in Auburn we could go take a look at on Thursday. Um, you got time on Thursday at like four o'clock? Maybe for the o'clock. Appointment. I love it. Guys, give it up for Jason Schaefer, please. Good job. Awesome. Guys, you how excited you are, Jason. Good job. I love it. Oh, boy. Now, you guys see how that's not a complicated conversation, right? It's a conversation we should all be having right now. He right? came with the value add. I love that. I love it. I love it. Anybody have any questions on how that works? Anybody have any questions about stuff that we've talked about today? Where did I get this shirt? <laughs> Send an XL, Cooley. Love it. No questions? All right, perfect. Um, 
guys, r- seriously, it's it's time to take action. You know, it's not time to sit by and watch other people either get out of the business or struggle with lower production. It's opportunity that we've got right now. Okay. And you guys, for those of you guys who haven't been on the breakfast club, I asked a lot of agents who I've coached with for a long time, you know, when are you, when are typically your best months? And a lot of people who coach with me say November and December. Why? Because especially with what's going on in the market right now, agents are lazy. They're focused on Christmas. They're focused on the holidays. They don't think anybody's doing anything right now. They don't have the talent, the skill, the resources to go out there and make that movement. You have all of those things, all of you. You guys have all of those things. And all you have to do is decide that you're going to do the things that most agents aren't willing to do to get the results that most agents don't get, okay? Because this is your springboard, your opportunity to consume market share. Because when the market rebounds, all of these people are going to flood back into the business trying to figure out, okay, well, I got to do this again. And you've cemented yourself in the industry and springboarded yourself, okay? So take that action, plug in, uh, take advantage of your resources, don't rely on technology, leverage it, and let's go out there and tear some shit up this week, shall we? Let's go. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Thank you, guys. Thank All you. Right. Let's go, guys. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> Thanks, MK. Later. Thanks.